We are constantly being bombarded by problems that we face and sometimes we can get completely overwhelmed. The story of the hummingbird is about this huge forest being consumed by a fire. All the animals in the forest come out and they are transfixed as they watch the forest burning and they feel very overwhelmed, very powerless except this little hummingbird. It says, I'm going to do something about the fire. So it flies to the nearest stream, takes a drop of water, and puts it on the fire, and goes up and down, up and down, up and down, as fast as it can. In the meantime, all the other animals, much bigger animals, like the elephant with a big trunk, could bring much more water. They are standing there helpless, and they are saying to the hummingbird, what do you think you can do? You're too little. This fire is too big. Your wings are too little. And you're big, so small. You can only bring a small drop of water at a time. But as they continue to discourage it, it turns to them without wasting any time and tells them, I am doing the best I can. And that to me is what all of us should do. We should always feel like a hummingbird. Hello. Hi, my name is Mason Rolf. Uh, I'm here to give you a little update about Olympia Community Solar. We are a 501c3 nonprofit in Olympia, Washington. Our mission is to develop and administer community solar arrays. Uh, these are special types of solar energy systems that serve multiple people. So if you don't have a good roof or the money to install a solar array or perhaps uh, some trees over your house that shade your house, um, we can subscribe you to a large offsite array and still provide you those benefits of renewable energy. So Olympia Community Solar was essentially something that kind of like has always lived in our hearts but never really manifested itself until after the campaign for clean energy that Mason and I both were working on. I think Mason and I were both looking for a solution now, something that we can do now. And Mason just kind of looks at me and is like, how about community solar? And I'm like, what is community solar? I don't really know anything about this. We didn't actually plan on starting a nonprofit. Um, we actually first went to some other nonprofits in the community and asked them to sponsor a project for us so that we could work under their umbrella. They told us that the project wouldn't pencil and that they wouldn't sponsor it. And so the day that I heard that, I went and incorporated OCS. The first six or eight months of OCS was all out of a few different members living rooms and crowded around their dining room tables and super intimate. Really at the core of it, OCS is a group of really educated and passionate people who are friends and who care about this common mission, which is to support our community through a clean energy transition and provide equitable access to solar energy. This is another City of Olympia owned site. Uh, potentially we could put a solar array on top of this large water reservoir. We all bring different things into the organization to really round it out and make it something special and unique. Like we have a world that we're trying to protect and this organization is one of the few organizations looking at these issues at our local level that I've seen be successful in a long time and it's 20 year olds who are making it happen.
Uh, one thing we're hoping to do once we get this installed uh, is create an educational display here to be used by both the FRESH program and the science departments. So that way the kids here at Tom Water High School can learn about solar, the ways it works, and uh, how to uh, integrate it better into their lives and community. So the first thing it took to build Hummingbird was about two years worth of research. Like there are people who have put in hours and hours of work that they haven't been thanked for yet. It's been nose to the grindstone the entire time. The first big hurdle we ran into was getting a lease agreement to use the rooftop. We had to uh, find some lawyers and part and like communicate with the city. I'm pretty sure the lease went through like a dozen or more drafts. I just want to put my hat off, I suppose, is the best word, to the Children's Museum and to Community Solar for modeling what early actions in a climate mitigation plan looks like and modeling how we can actually make an economy in green energy. I want to thank the Hands-On Children's Museum, Olympia Community Solar, first for your vision and providing us with an opportunity to take action on a tangible near-term thing that we can actually do. Right, Councilor Parsley. I'd like to motion the approval of a resolution authorizing a solar energy rooftop lease agreement between the City of Olympia Hands-On Children's Museum and Olympia Community Solar. I'll second, second that. Oh, sure. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion passes, congratulations. One of the reasons I think having an organization like OCS is so important is that we know a clean energy transition is going to happen. There's 100% clean energy law. So really now what matters is how it happens and who it benefits. When I was looking at solar as a solution to climate change, it was obvious that the biggest barrier was access. And so community solar and the inspiration for Hummingbird was to create a project that anybody could access. The array itself consists of just over 300 panels and we divided those panels into 800 units. People could choose to purchase those units at $300 each or donate a unit to a participating nonprofit. Over the course of a year, the energy that that unit generates will be returned to the participant in the form of an annual check. Once the array is completely paid back, then the museum will receive the array in perpetuity. We're estimating in about 15 to 20 years, depending on our payback. We initially we're going to launch the project offering in April of 2020. And that was like right when the pandemic hit and was really bad. So it took us a couple months to figure out, but we were able to completely tr convert to an online system and manage enrollment that way. Hey friends, this is Andrew. This is Matt. This is Jenna. With, With Olympia, Olympia Community Solar. Solar. As you can see, we haven't been working next to each other due to the pandemic. But that does not mean our work has stopped. We've continued to meet virtually to continue our clean energy efforts. However, we still need help from our community to keep working on Thurston County's largest community solar project, Hummingbird. It felt like it might not happen until like really community support just started piling in. Everything takes longer than expected. There's always an obstacle to every project or anything that we'd like to accomplish. And being able to come together as a team and work creatively and develop solutions around those obstacles and to truly support each other through troubling times has um, been pretty eye-opening. If you guys have been following our social media, you will have heard that we successfully enrolled the Hummingbird Community Solar Project. Huge news, huge news. It took about 
six months and uh, over 160 donation, separate donors and supporters, uh, but we did it. And what I love about this project, and I love it more than everything we've thought about in the beginning, is that it mirrors how this museum was built. It was built through the contributions of thousands and thousands of community members. And this community solar project does the same thing. This is a place of learning. And we have the opportunity to show the community the importance of climate action right here. And uh, we also see thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people come through our doors each year. And we have the opportunity to marry what's happening on our roof directly with the education programs going on inside the museum. One study shows that when you build a visible solar array, solar installations within a one mile area of that increase by more than 40% because people see it, they know that it's working, they know that their community is doing it and they wanna uh, follow that example. To me, an important piece of the project is giving the kids who visit the museum an example of what they are going to see their whole lives and what uh, you know could be a big part of their career and their future. Making the availability of power more equitable and more affordable is one of the first steps to kind of equalizing everybody. We are the uh, town square for our community and we want to bring together not only families to play and learn but also to benefit our community partners and the uh, families that they serve. So we're really excited because this project is so inclusive. There are 99 community members who have had the first chance in their lives to own clean energy. Going out larger than that, there are 14 nonprofits who had significant amounts of the system, a majority of the system donated to them. And that'll provide them with long-term operating support and reduce their energy burden so that they can serve the community better. So we were approached by the Hummingbird Project to see if we wanted to join in, and we did. So we let our supporters know about it, and about 15 uh, units were donated to Grub. Our farm here is a youth-run, community-supported agriculture farm. So people join the farm for the season to get healthy food, but also to really support youth and having that opportunity to grow their own leadership skills and in, in caring for the land here on our farm. Our impact is more people having access to healthy food and to opportunities to learn how to grow and prepare it and to gather together to create their own solutions for what they want to see here in Olympia. And so Community Solar is so similar in terms of a community investment that people are making eating local foods and by using local energy, it's a way we can really reduce our environmental impact. So uh, since 1990, Homes First uh, has created and maintained safe, healthy, and affordable homes, rental homes specifically. So because our housing is in neighborhoods and not um, in a big apartment complex somewhere, it's not as visible. But what we have done, both through our housing and through our advocacy work, is made sure that our community and our elected officials understand that there's not only one way to do housing. Giving people the opportunity to choose where they live and how they live is super important. When we heard about the Hummingbird Project, uh, we were very excited. It's always been uh, one of my dreams to um, see more community solar going on. So Homes First has not actually purchased any units at all. They've all been donated to us by community members who see the value in what we're doing and want to support us, but also the value in solar panels, which is very exciting for us. So we've had 11 solar panels or 26 units donated to us. This community, Thurston County, Olympia, and the region, Tumwater, Lacey, 
has a lot of really concerned, caring people living here. And I think that the fact that Community Solar is bringing this opportunity to our community, it's ready for this. It's ready to start including solar in the plans, not just from an individual level, but from the community level. So it's very exciting that we have that leadership coming from uh, Community Solar to help make that happen. Being able to be a local leader and, uh, and a recognized national leader uh, to show folks you can do this. You know, it, it can be done. I think that's what I think of our aspirational uh, museums that we look up to and uh, hope that folks uh, all across the country who are in the same um, work of serving young families and, and communities will see this as a, um, uh, an exciting opportunity that they can bring into their own community as well. Mm -hmm, definitely. I think that we see our organization as part of a larger movement that not only incorporates clean energy, but just, you know, an equitable and accessible future for all people. I really see our organization as being the community's solar. We actually, when we were designing this new museum, we really wanted it to be an example of sustainability, of green practices, we had actually designed the building to house solar panels and our south facing orientation, our shed roof was not only um, designed to take advantage of passive solar energy, but to have the solar panels so that we could use them as an educational opportunity for kids. You know, it just isn't practical for everyone to have solar panels on their roof. And so this is a great way to feel like you're doing something tangible for the community when you can't personally do it. And so I'm a big advocate for additional projects. Some people think that solar only works on sunny places. The, the panels make energy with light. So technically in cloudy days like this, is producing, not 100%, but it's producing. As you guys can see, we work in heights and slippery, you know, roofs. We jump on the roof, we clip, we, we use all the harness, all safety equipment. So then we start uh, putting S5s to grab the, the metal seam of the roof, the attachment actually from the array into the roof. And then the rail, then we put all the rail, then we move into optimizers attach those, hook them up, wire manage all into the rail so it's not hanging on the metal. So we start laying the panels and we start from, we start from the bottom working our way up. Yeah. And in this case, all this power that we are building here is a DC energy or you know voltage, uh, which is direct current. So that's the same current that you find in your car. And this electricity is AC. Alternating, alternating current. So we have to convert the DC at some point to AC. This solar system is 117 kilowatts. We have 297 modules on the roof. Um, each module is 390 watts. And so all of the solar panels that are on the roof all get tied back to a box on the roof and all of the wires come down in these three conduits. Once they go down into these conduits, they go into this box, which this box is an inverter. So this is DC power that's coming from the roof. It goes through this inverter and it inverts it to AC. So this, the voltage of this inverter is 277,480, but our service or our utility is 12208. So this big box here is a transformer this is a 112 kVA transformer. So what this is doing, it's transforming the 277,480 and it's stepping it down to 120,208. It basically goes 
in from here and out through those two big pipes and goes all the way back to the service, which it interconnects into a 350 amp breaker, which um, is able to be pushed back to the utility. My deepest hope is it's going to spark a lot of ideas and change. So I hope that for children and youth that they get excited about solar energy. I think there's really two components to the Hummingbird Project that are really exciting. Uh, one is that this massive solar array is actually going to be reducing our dependency on non-renewable resources for our community. And then of course the second part is at the same time it's supporting nonprofits. Nonprofits are the backbone of our community. Every participant and every nonprofit is going to benefit for decades to come from clean solar energy. It's a relief. It's, it's been, we've had our setbacks, but it's, it's really a relief to have been able to stand here and like actually see it in place. I'm so proud to be part of, of Thurston County's largest solar installation. Coming together of community members uh, by and for the community on the Hands-On Children's Museum. Uh, it's, if you're looking for a shot of hope for the future, look no further. It's right here in your own backyard, Olympia. One of the taglines for Hummingbird that I love to use is called leaving a lasting legacy for the community. And that's exactly what it's going to do. I may feel insignificant, but I certainly don't want to be like the animals watching as the planet goes down the drain. I will be a hummingbird. I will do the best I can. And we're so appreciative of all of the amazing people who came together to make this possible, from folks at the city to the port to, you know, our amazing nonprofit participants who are just going to receive the benefits of renewable energy to our incredible community that has supported this project. I really do feel like this is such an incredibly holistic thing, but at the same time, it is not the end by any means. We have another community solar project in progress, and we'll also be releasing some really cool new ways to support uh, an equitable transition to clean energy in the next few months. We'll launch Solarize Thurston, which will be a residential group purchasing campaign. The idea is to get 50 households together and do a group purchase of solar installations. And we'll get lower prices, we'll motivate people to act and actually you know, take the dive, and we'll make it incredibly simple for them. So it's only a yes or no decision rather than having to shop around. A core way to support us is in not only participating in these projects, which yes, we want people to do, but it's also providing us with a, a donation and we can't focus on future projects unless we know that we are supported. Um, so I encourage all people to check out our website, engage with our information and our programs. We have merchandise available um, and definitely support our team because we want to be able to continue to do this work for many years to come.